This is the Arduino Dew, and I have a couple of different demos here showing how it can be used to drive an XY display to create some pretty cool looking vector graphics. The nice thing about the Dew is that it actually doesn't require any additional hardware in order to do this. Um, it has two 12-bit DAC outputs, which can be used to directly connect to uh, an analog or, or digital scope in XY mode. Uh, in this case, I actually have both connected here, which we'll get back to in a second. The only additional hardware, other than the scope probes hanging off there, is um, a the receiver for a PS2 wireless controller, uh, which is used to control some of the demos. But as far as the, the graphics itself goes, no additional hardware is required. So here we have the two DAC outputs of the Geo connected to two different scopes. Um, the one on the left, the Kixtui uh, analog scope, is um, displaying the output in XY mode. And the one on the right, the Siglent, is displaying a normal um, display versus time. Uh, this first demo is uh, a 3D point cloud representing a human head. And the PlayStation controller can be used to manipulate it in various ways. So for instance, um, the right joystick can rotate one way or the other, or tilt it up or down, and the left joystick can, can tilt it that way, which is sort of a weird way. But anyway, there's three different uh, uh, axes of, of rotation which are available, and they can all be manipulated at the same time using the joystick. And if I press the cross, it, it resets it in case you get lost. I can also zoom it out and zoom it in as well, and again, reset all the parameters. So everything you see here is actually is happening in real time. Uh, this particular data set has, I think, 742 points, and all of this manipulation is happening in real time. Uh, the Geo actually uses a 32-bit uh, RISC processor running at 84 meg. It's actually pretty fast, so it has no problem doing this. Um, I guess there's um, uh, each each frame uh, requires six six trig functions, the sine and cos of each of the three angles of rotation. Uh, but then every point requires uh, a matrix operation in order to rotate it to the required position and then and then project it uh, as a perspective. Um, I've done a few projects in the past using uh, the, the UNO and other um, Arduinos based on the AVR core. And in general, this, this one's actually about, about 10 times faster. The same code running on this processor is about 10 times faster. Uh, plus it has a lot, a lot more RAM and ROM. So for this kind of uh, experimentation, the, the Geo is a nice, a nice uh, platform to play with. Um, on the, I've got actually two cameras going here. The one uh, on my phone uh, is probably producing some artifacts. I really can't see until I've played it back here, but uh, in general, it flickers. Um, but I, I've, I've um, modified the, the code here to actually sync the display to 30 Hertz. And uh, even though my phone is supposed to be running at 30 frames per second, it, it seems to use a different shutter speed other than a faster shutter speed. So. There are some artifacts, but I've got another camera going here, which is using a 30, uh, 30th of a second shutter speed. So it's, uh, should be stable. One of the cool things about, about this, the fact that there's like all of the dots in front and behind are visible. So there's no, you know, there's no hidden line or hidden dot removal. Um, it actually makes the image ambiguous. So although I've sort of designed it to, to appear to rotate in, in one direction, it's actually, it's actually ambiguous as to which way it's, it's rotating. I started with the point cloud demo first because it was actually the easiest to code. And in fact, the demos that I'm going to show you are, are kind of in the order that I developed them. But, but drawing a single point 
on this case, 742 of them, it's actually much easier than, you know, than drawing lines or other objects. Uh, as far as the XY display goes, all you have to do is, you know, program the, the two DAC outputs to address that particular location and not have to worry about anything in between. Uh, but in the subsequent demos, I'll uh, show you some, some further improvements. So the second demo shows how the XY functionality has been extended to include uh, the generation of lines and circles. Um, in this case, I've used that to program a clock. So the, in order to draw lines, uh, it's basically just a Bresenham line algorithm. And uh, the circle is a, a kind of a variation of that, just called a midpoint circle algorithm. But basically the, the micro has to um, you know, fill in each of the dots along each line and, and along the circumference of, of the circle. But again, this is all, this is all happening in real time. And the, um, the text, the Arduino Geo text, uh, that's just three by some three by seven font that I had from an, an earlier project. Uh, it's a, it's pretty coarse, but I didn't feel like, uh, spending any more time refining the fonts for this demo, but it's actually, uh, the lines the lines are pretty clean. Um, I guess one difference between the first demo and this one is that, uh, in the first demo, the position of each point, I, I was using the full 12 bit resolution of, of each DAC. So basically 400 or 4,096 points in each dimension. And that full resolution was being used in the first demo. In this demo, uh, because of the need to fill in the points along the line, along the lines and, and the circle, um, you know, if I used the full resolution, there would be too many points. It would be too, too much uh, work for the processor. So in this case, I've, I've adopted uh, basically 512 by 512. Um, so I'm only using one eighth of the resolution of the DACs in each dimension. But um, on the small display of the scope, 512 by 512 produces a, a pretty, pretty sharp image. So the lines are, are pretty sharp. So in this third demo, I'm combining the uh, processing 3D points uh, from the first demo with the generation of lines from the second demo to basically produce uh, a wireframe uh, type image, which again can be manipulated using the, uh, the joystick. And again, this is, this is all happening in real time. This is sort of kind of reaching the limits of the, um, the processing of the, of the DIA and the arm core. Um, I've actually, well, I'm artificially limiting the display to, to 30 Hertz in this case, in order to sync with the camera. Uh, I think before I placed the limit, it was, it was running about 40 Hertz. So, you know, if I, if I were to use a larger data set, then it wouldn't be able to, uh, manipulate it in real time. It wouldn't be smooth. Uh, this particular data set, I think, has a 106 points, so it's a, it's quite a bit smaller than the first one, the head. And um, yeah, if if I had joined all the lines in the head, then um, the refresh rate wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be very good at all. Maybe a, a couple of hertz at best. But again, the uh, you know the lines are are very sharp and the the motion is smooth. And uh, this is all being done by the GIA without, without the need for any additional hardware other than the controller, which is uh, kind of optional anyway. I mean, you know, even without the controller, you could, you could pre-program these to, you know, to rotate through a desired path without even having the controller. In fact, I did that before I, before I hooked up the controller. So, Anyway, if you're looking for a platform to experiment with um, either this type of XY display programming or, or really anything high performance, uh, the Arduino Dua is, uh, is a pretty great platform.